As colleges and universities digest yesterday's Supreme Court ruling that effectively ended affirmative action, schools are left to grapple with how to revamp their admission policies to ensure diversity of their campuses. William Brangham takes a look at these implications and how some colleges say they'll, say they'll ensure diversity remains a top priority. Jeff, with admissions officers no longer able to take race into account, Colleges and universities will need to adopt other approaches if they want to build a diverse student body. For some perspective, we're joined by Jeff Salingo. He's a writer who has covered higher education for years. He's the author, most recently, of Who Gets In and Why. Jeff, great to have you back on the News Hour. Great to be here. So the reality of this new landscape is obviously sinking in for schools. You spent, for your last book, uh, a sort of under the hood look with admissions officers at how they go about their jobs. What is your sense of how they're going to all be responding to this new challenge? Well, I think they're going to have to figure it out over the next year, you know, especially given, you know, applications will start arriving this fall. And one of the interesting things is that admissions is a very data driven operation. And so they're constantly following how they're doing on their various uh, on their various priorities. So whether that's geography, whether that's race and ethnicity, whether that's, you know, men and women, you know, they're, they're always looking at these priorities through the admissions season that starts in November through the last uh, acceptance or last denial that they send out in March. And they're not going to be able to track that. So they always knew during the process how well they were doing at enrolling black students or at least accepting black students or accepting Hispanic students. They're not going to be able to do that as much as they used to. So they're going to be kind of flying blind in terms of their enrollment until uh, they, they know those enrollment numbers later in the season. The majority opinion written by Justice Roberts said implied that there were other ways that schools could try to take race into account through things like essays. Is that how you imagine that schools are going to start to try to adapt? I think they're going to be looking for other ways. And he specifically said, you know, students can talk about their lived experiences in their essays. But he also warned colleges in essentially that same opinion, don't use that as a workaround against uh, around race. So it's clear that students are going to be able to talk in different places. And also teachers and counselors are going to be able to talk in their recommendations about students. But they're going to have to be clear. There's going to be clear line. And for, I think, a lot of these admissions readers, it's going to be a little difficult, uh, at least this first year around, in terms of determining, you know, how can we use race in this in this way? Um, prior to yesterday, there were several schools in the country that, because of local laws, were not allowed to take race into consideration, California and Michigan in particular. What has their experience been like? And, and are they a way to sort of look into the future of how other schools might do this? Oh, definitely. And I think what the experience in there, and I also was at the University of Washington for my book, which was also could not use race in, in admissions, it was really around the recruitment process. They had to get that funnel very big at the top in order to enroll the number of students that they wanted. And this requires working with high schools, working with high school counselors, because the, there's 25,000 high schools in this country. But the reality is that at most of these selective colleges, you might only get applications from six or 7,000 of them. And most of the students that they want are in those schools that never apply. So they're going to have to do a lot more outreach than they ever have before. And for most of these schools, they didn't do that in the past. Right. I understand California spent a, I think a half a billion dollars trying right. to reach out to and students. And remember, and they were focused mostly on California. So now most of these other colleges are going to have to look beyond their own states. Justice Roberts, in his majority opinion, said that diversity on a campus is a commendable goal, but not if it comes at the expense of others, was the implication. How do universities respond to this allegation that was made by Asian American students here that, that they were being discriminated against in the admissions process? You know, we tend to think of admissions as this meritocracy that it is based on merit, but it never has been one, and it probably never will be. The reality is, is that nine out of 10 students who apply to these most selective colleges are denied admission. And the students who are accepted are accepted for a variety of reasons. We have athletes, we have legacies, of course, that are accepted to many of these places. We need to, we need to have balance among gender at these places. We need to have balance among geography. So sometimes students are accepted because they're from the right state in many cases, or they might be a full pay student, or they might be the third baseman for the baseball team. So we shouldn't think of the meritocracy of admissions as this pure thing. And I think that's the thing that was missing in the Supreme Court decision. Uh, lastly, the 
The issue of standardized testing has been, we know that they have been fading somewhat in what schools are requiring of students. Does this have an impact on that? Yeah, I don't think it's coming back as a result. Testing is no, done. Testing is done at, at, as, a, as a requirement, especially at these selective colleges, and for two reasons. One is that they've seen because they went test optional during the pandemic, they've gotten a more diverse uh, applicant pool as a result. And so now they wanna keep that diverse applicant pool. The other thing is that all the plaintiffs in these affirmative action cases over the years, going back 20 years to the Michigan cases, have used test scores as one, set, you know, one proof point in terms of that they were discriminated against, that you know, students who were denied admission with a 1500 SAT, you know, and other students with a 1200. Well, when you don't have scores from everybody, it's a lot more difficult to make that case. Jeffrey Salingo, always good to see you. Thank you so much. It was great to be here. Thank you.